If you haven't already, be sure to check out my review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 61. After watching that episode, I realized how big of a scumbag Zamasu really is. Want to know why? Well, check it out. The last episode of Dragon Ball Super, I think it's safe to say, was pretty intense and can be summed up with these three phrases. Damn. Holy shit. What the fuck? I would say that accurately sums up the previous episode. And this episode is a little different. It doesn't have as many moments like that, but it has a lot of character-driven moments. And I do enjoy character-driven moments, so right now we're going to dive right into the episode and see what happens. The episode starts off with Trunks basically showing off his new form, the Black, and Black doesn't seem impressed at all. And the two duke it out for a while, and then eventually Zamasu jumps in and becomes a two-on-one assault. Vegeta tries to jump in, but Zamasu kind of bitch smacks him out of there. Trunks is able to hold his own, though, against Black and Zamasu, but in the end, it does seem like he isn't a huge threat to them. However, he does tell Vegeta and Goku and Bulma to go back to the past and try and find a way to defeat Black while he holds them off. Or excuse me, not Black, but Zamasu. Vegeta's pretty reluctant at first, but Goku says it's probably our best option. So they end up going in the time machine, and as they're getting ready to leave, Goku Black notices the time machine flying off, and he fires a key blast at it. But it doesn't hit, because Trunks fires a key blast to deflect his key blast into another direction. By the way, we still have no idea what this little power-up or transformation is, but I'm guessing it is what I predicted it was going to be. I never said this in the previous episode, but I really do think that this transformation that Trunks got is pretty worthless. For starters, it just looks like a slimmed down Ultra Super Saiyan, you know, the fan name for Super Saiyan Grade 2, I believe, and it just looks as pointless as that transformation was. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I, like, right now it just seems to be that I'm right. So Goku, Bulma, and Vegeta all return to the present timeline, and Kid Trunks assumes that, you know, since Future Trunks isn't with them, that the future is safe. And then Beerus brags about how he was right, but then Bulma jumps in all angrily and says, No, Beerus, you weren't right, you were wrong. And then Beerus just kind of plays it off like, oh, well, I, uh, I kind of figured I was wrong anyway. Yeah, you know, you know, he's trying to fix up his mistakes. Vegeta ends up talking about the future and how it's doing right now, and obviously that's not great. Then he brings up the origin of Goku Black, which, of course, Goku Black is Zamasu, who also used these Super Dragon Balls to, you guessed it, wish himself immortal. Beerus ends up saying that he already killed the Zamasu of this timeline, so there's no need to go into the future and kill that Zamasu, even if he wanted to. Because remember, gods aren't supposed to break the time taboo. Whis and Beerus end up leaving, and they wish the others good luck. So it's funny, because we get to see Chi-Chi and Gohan. Yes, Gohan! Gohan's relevant again! What a shocker! And Chi-Chi's asking Krillin at the police station while he's on the job, I guess, about if he's seen Goku. And Krillin just kind of stalls them, like, oh, well, you see, I don't really know. And while this is all going on, Trunks is seen knocking on, I mean, Kid Trunks, of course, is, is he's seen knocking on Goten's window. And I guess Goten, the way they explain how Goten hasn't been involved until now is that he's been sleeping. If that's the case, he is one heavy sleeper, I must say. So Trunks gets Goten up, and eventually Chi-Chi sees them flying in the air and it looks like they're heading towards Capsule Corporation. We end up seeing Goten and Trunks talking to Bulma about getting involved with the fight with Black, but Bulma quickly turns them down saying that there's no way they could stand up to Black. If Goku couldn't do it, how could they? You know, that's her reasoning for it. But then she goes on to say, don't worry about it because Goku will beat him and Vegeta overhears this and you could tell that it kind of bothered him. Ah, good old Vegeta, still obsessed with surpassing Kakarot. Chi-Chi ends up confronting Bulma about the whole situation and Bulma is trying to stall them off as well. But unfortunately, members of the Pilaf gang and others alike come in and they make the situation worse by saying things that just confuse Chi-Chi and whatnot. Then eventually Goku comes out and he's healed up, he's all bandaged, and Chi-Chi so like, she's shocked, not slocked. Why did I say, why was I going to say slocked? Oh, whatever. She was shocked to see that he's covered up in bandages. Then eventually this leads to Bulma explaining the whole future thing about Okay, they went to the future, they've been time traveling back and forth with Trunks. And at, while all this is going on, you can see that they're having a bit more focus on Gohan. Now, I don't know why. Hopefully it does lead to something, but with Super, it's probably not. I, I really wish they would do something with Gohan. Like, I'm sure a lot of you wish that too. But right now, it just seems unlikely, and that's that's just sad, if you ask me. Hopefully, he does something in this arc, or at least not this, if not this one, then the next one. So, Goku even brings up how Zamasu switched bodies with him and killed, 
you know, Chi Chi and Goten, and Chi Chi freaks out, runs over the Goten, and then Bulma's like, calm down, calm down. It was a different Chi Chi and Goten. It wasn't you guys. I mean, it was you guys, but it was in a different timeline. Vegeta then brings up how Zamasu is immortal and that there's basically no way to defeat him. Then Piccolo steps in and says, there probably is something you could do. The Mafuba. And for those of you who don't know what the Mafuba is, the Mafuba, or otherwise known in the English dub as a evil containment wave, is the attack that Master Roshi tried to use on Demon King Piccolo back in Dragon Ball. Now in the dub, it's called the evil containment wave, but in the Japanese version and manga, it's known as the demon containment wave. So I don't get how they're going to use a demon containment wave on Zamasu. I don't think Zamasu's a demon unless he just suddenly reveals himself as a Kaioshin which I think would be pretty cool, no lie. But I doubt it's going to happen. So Goku ends up going straight to Master Roshi's house right before Piccolo says he's going to demonstrate the Mafuba. <laughs> oh man, Goku, he's really something else. Yeah, he ends up instant transmissioning or, you know, using the instantaneous movement to go to Master Roshi's house to try and learn the Mafuba. And Master Roshi agrees, but tells him you should remember that the attack is very dangerous on your body. So Goku ends up using the Mafuba, or he's practicing the Mafuba, on the turtle, of all things. The turtle. And this leads to some really good comedy sketches, because he's he keeps trying to get the sea turtle into the jar, but he keeps missing and throwing him, and he does this overnight, and, and Master Roshi keeps telling him, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, don't stop until you get it. And then finally, early in the morning, Goku ends up getting it. And then Master Roshi's like, great, now I just got to get some. Now I just have to make a little note to put on the side. Because I'm pretty sure that's what, that's what it is. It's just a little note that goes on the side to like contain them. That and, you know, you have to seal them. And poor Turtle, he looked so miserable. <laughs> After this scene's done, we're shown Beerus, Whis, and Gowasu in Universe 10. Beerus says how he could easily kill future Zamasu, but he couldn't, you know, time travel because he doesn't want to break the time paradox. You know, he doesn't want to break the god rules where they can't travel in time. So Gowasu brings up how it was his fault for choosing Zamasu as his apprentice and that how he's going to take full responsibility for it. And surprisingly, this is where the episode ends. Usually we've been left with a cliffhanger and I've been saying to myself, when are they not going to give us a cliffhanger? This episode, they did not give us a cliffhanger. It just ended. Kind of felt abrupt, but they ended it. Overall, this episode was pretty good. The fight scene in the beginning had, I'm sure you're going to hear this from a lot of people, a lot of people said it was good, but... For me, I just felt that the animation was really choppy and felt off. And there was a lot of inconsistencies. Like for one, Trunks in his powered up form had all white eyes. Like there was no black dot or anything. And then all of a sudden his blue dot just returned out of, the, out of nowhere. It felt really inconsistent. Plus there were a few times where the character models looked a bit off. But overall, the episode itself held up. There was really nothing wrong with it. There was a lot of good comedy sketches. I liked the fact that they brought back the Mafuba, an attack that probably maybe should have been brought back sooner. Because honestly, that is a neat attack. But I'm glad they brought it back now because it does make sense. So yeah, if you haven't checked this episode out, I would recommend it. It was pretty good. And I look forward to what they're doing in the next episode. It looks like Vegeta is going to go up against Black. And I look forward to seeing Vegeta and Black fight off. Hopefully Vegeta wins. I really hope Vegeta gets this win. Because in a way, he could say he beat Goku. Now, granted, it's not actually Goku, but he could at least say that he defeated Kakarot. That would be pretty cool. This is Gojira 2012, saying farewell for now.